Welcome, low ego action heroes. This is Debbie Levitt from DeltaCX.com. We're a full service CX and UX agency. And welcome to a special Sunday broadcast of the live stream. As you might know, we are doing a series of micro lessons uh, about observational research. And so we have had some wonderful friends of the show volunteer to be fake research subjects so we can take a look at how we might interview them and observe what they're doing and uh, practice our note taking. Um, Shalene says hi, hence the thing over my head. Um, Kayleen says, I'm on time. Don't worry, Kayleen, we'd never start without you. So uh, today our wonderful volunteer is Maggie, uh, sometimes known as Maggie P, and uh, super friend of the show. But first I have to give you a couple of uh, house rules and disclaimers, um, even though I'm not a lawyer. So please remember that this is kind of fakey research that we planned a few days ago together. So I've got a, a discussion guide um, and you can find this in the micro lessons playlist along with everything else in this series to help you practice. Um, after we do, I think we have eight of these scheduled, hopefully everybody shows up. We are going to start Monday, March 29 on um, uh, affinity diagrams. So get your notes ready by then. We're all gonna join in together live on a mural board. You don't need a mural account. I will invite you as an anonymous animal and uh, we'll work on that. Uh, Ajinkya says, hi from India. Hello. Uh, Constantina says, hey. Um, so get your notes ready in time for March 29th. Also note that Italy changes our clocks next weekend. So if we've been kind of off time for you in the last week or so, we're going to return to the right time in a week. So look for 6.30 p.m. Italy time. One thing to note is that while this research is happening, I'm going to be taking notes. Now in general, I recommend that people take minimal notes during the research, just a couple of things they want to remember to follow up on, and then watch their recording later and take their full set of notes. I don't do that. That's why this is do what I say, not what I do. You're going to watch how I usually actually take notes during research, except since we've been doing this every day, my wrist hurts a little bit. I think I'm slowing down. But um, I take very full notes while people are talking. Everyone recommends against that. So again, don't be like me. You could try, but don't do it. And uh, I'm just going to leave it there. Hi, Sujish. So let's bring in Maggie. Let's bring in Maggie. Oh, with a funny echo. Oh, How with are a you? funny echo. How oh, are wait. you? I'm playing oh, outside. I'm, I'm playing outside. I'm playing. All right. Sorry. I had to. That, I was is turning. that working now? Do that. Am I echoing? Yeah. Okay, not nope. echoing. Super. Okay, welcome. Now we're going to switch into interviewer and participant mode. Dilly lily, lily. Um, okay. <clears throat> and I've been talking all day. I'm dying. Hi, I'm Debbie from Delta CX. We're a research agency, a agency helping kitchen thingies, totally fake company we made up, um, to better know home cooks. Thank you so much for being part of our study. Also, thanks for signing the consent form earlier. I just want to double check that I have your permission to record our session and broadcast it and archive it on YouTube. Say yes. Yep. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> Today will be pretty straightforward and shouldn't take more than an hour. I'll ask you some questions, we'll watch you cook a meal, and then I have some final questions. Please note that I'm hoping to hear you think out loud. Tell me all of your thoughts and opinions, even if you think they're negative. We can't make things better without hearing where things are difficult or annoying. You can't give us too much information, and there are no wrong answers. All right. And also note I'm going to be typing some notes in the background, so you might hear some keyboard clicking. Um, let me start with the easy questions. Um, can I ask your age? Um, 28. Okay. Oh, 28. Um, and who else is in your household living with you? I'm currently living with my fiancé and two dogs. Wow, congratulations, fiance Thanks. and two dogs. I may or may not spell that right. Okay, um, do you tend to cook mostly for yourself or for others as well? Uh, I would say mainly for the both of us. Okay. And then if, if we have friends over or if there's a special event, then I will throw in my my cooking skills and also cook something. 
Okay, so you might be the main cook in the household? Um, yes, definitely. Okay. And, uh, you know, I'm writing notes, and, and um, if it's not too personal, you don't have to answer this. May I ask the right pronoun to use for you? Uh, she, they. Okay. She and they. Okay, thanks. So I'll, I'll use those. Thank you so much. Um, do you or anybody in the household follow a special diet or have food sensitivities or need to adjust food for medical conditions? Uh, nothing too strict. I tend to be the one who introduces uh, different diets into the household, mainly because I like to figure out how to maintain my diet, especially now I I think I gained a few during uh, the pandemic, so I'm trying back to uh, get back to my original weight uh, pre-pandemic. <laughs> so I'm trying to do a low-carb diet right now. Okay, got it. But the fiancé is not doing any particular special diet or medical restrictions? No, nah, he'll eat anything. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so um, so I was going to ask if anybody is following a weight loss or weight gain program, but it sounds like you're working on the low carb. Yeah, I'm not, again, nothing that I follow specifically. It's more like me being conscious about what I eat and if I'm losing weight or not. Okay, got it. Uh, how many times per day would you say you microwave a pre-prepared meal? Uh, rarely. Like, uh, the only times I ever microwave something is to defrost something okay. that's been on the freezer. Got but it. if so we're, we're talking meals, yeah. yeah, if we're talking, if we're talking meals, I'll tend to either rely on my stove or um, my air fryer at that point. Okay, makes sense. Um, and so how many times per day would you say you're cooking fresh or mostly from scratch? Uh, just once a day for me right now, mainly for dinner. And so does that mean the other meals are takeout or restaurant or sandwiches? I've been eating, no, I've been eating protein shakes for lunch. Got it, okay. We'll have to swap recipes. Um, and who in the household often does the shopping? I mainly do. Uh, okay. we, I, yeah, I put together a list and then I ask like what else is missing and then go from there. Got it. Um, and do you ever get grocery or supermarket delivery to your home? Yes, um, rarely, but every now and again, uh, depending on the situation, like if, if there's stuff on sale or I really don't want to go out, then I'll kind of splurge. Uh, I have the Amazon Prime, so I get Whole Foods free delivery. Oh. So I've tried that a, a couple of times. Um, not the best selection, so that's why I don't do it as often. I have been mostly doing pickup, so I try to avoid the store as much as I can, but it's not 100%. Like, there are things that I know are in the store that I, I can't seem to find online, so I still need to go to the store every now and again. Got it. Makes sense. Oops. Um, and have you tried any of the meal delivery services that come in a box where it's like the ingredients and some instructions like a HelloFresh or Blue Apron? Mm hmm I have. Um, I've tried, like, uh, I've tried three of them. Three. I think I've tried HelloFresh, uh, the blue, blue one, Blue Apron, and... Uh, I forget the other one. It's been so long, but, uh, yeah, but I've only tried them if I get a discount. Never okay. actually continued on with the service. Was there a reason why you didn't continue? <sighs> Too expensive. I really wasn't, uh, the benefit, the so, so-called benefits weren't really meeting up to my expectations. Even the produce that I got delivered wasn't great. 
Um, so I was more disappointed that I was uh, enjoying it, so I stopped. Got it. Um, let me just check my questions. Excuse me a moment. Uh, would you say your shopping or cooking habits have changed because of the pandemic? A hundred percent. Yep. Um, I used to go to the store probably every week um, around Wednesdays because there's stuff on sale on Wednesdays. But uh, now that I'm avoiding all of that, then I think I rely more on either delivery or pickup uh, services. So again, avoiding the store as much as I can. But if I can't, then I'll try to make sure I make the most out of that trip. Like yesterday, I made the most out of that trip. It's like, um, <laughs> my fiance was like, oh, can you grab, go pick up some beers? And I'm like, yeah, okay, but I need these five other things. So I just made sure to get the, get everything. Got it. While you're out getting the beers, get these other things. <laughs> yeah. Maximize efficiency. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and avoiding the stores, uh, is, is that, I don't want to read too much into it. Is that pandemic mm. or you hate shopping or something else? Yeah, no, I, I, uh, it, it, it took me a while to get used to because I actually enjoyed going to the store weekly. Um, it was like a little bit of me time and I like perusing the aisles and do a little bit of people watching. So, uh, not being able to do that anymore, obviously, it took some getting used to, but um, we, I'd rather stay safe than, than not. Of course, please do. Um, um, okay, shifting to a couple of other questions. Have you ever mm -hmm. taken a cooking class? Uh, not since I was a kid, um, and it was a specialty class. It was for uh, making sushi. Uh, got a little, yeah, got a little certification and everything, but, um, nothing besides that, like, most of my cooking just comes from, um, my grandma, like, I grew up with my grandma, and she loves to cook, um, that woman can cook for an army, and kind of learned from her, and she just kind of passed on those skills on to me. Got it, um, and, and, uh, you grew up living with her? Uh, kinda. So she would pick me up after school, and then my mom would come pick me up when she was done with work. So a good chunk of the day after school, I would just be with her. And obviously, around dinner time, I'd be around still. So I would help her out. Got it. Weren't those the good old days? <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see. Um, do you tend to use recipes, websites, or follow cooking blogs, videos, or TV shows? Uh, for recipes, only if I'm doing something that I'm, I'm not used to, um, something that I don't cook often or I'm not super familiar with, I'll, I'll make those exceptions. Uh, in terms of following others, um, mostly for entertainment pur purposes, nothing, nothing that it, that's like, I'm going to use this for cooking. So um, I love binging with Babish. And he does a lot of stuff that I probably couldn't because I don't have a lot of the specialty utensils and whatnot. And I also, it, it's a lot of work. So it's like, I'll just, I'll just enjoy somebody else doing it. And that's where the entertainment piece comes in. It's like, I'll watch somebody, but it's mo mainly for entertainment purposes. Uh, anybody else you enjoy watching for fun? Uh, I used to watch a lot of Food Network when we had cable. Not so much anymore. And I do watch a lot of the Tasty videos. Because um, they're quirky and fun and easy to watch. And sometimes I'll grab ideas from, from those videos. Um, that may or may not make me want to look up a recipe if it looks good. Got it. Have you ever tried a tasty video and found that it was a lie? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. It's entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got it. Okay, be careful. Uh, some of those are dangerous. Um, yeah. 
Do you have any Internet of Things or smart home appliances or devices? Uh, yes, actually, we do have a, a set of Google products. So we have the uh, like five Google homes and the thermostat and the Wi-Fi. So we're we're fans of the, the Google products just because the other products just didn't live up to our standards. We used to have an Alexa and, and I ended up hating it. Got it. So you are well into the Google verse. When you say the, the thermostat, it's a Nest? Yes, the Nest. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, and which of those, you got lots of products there. Which of those would you say is your favorite? Uh, which one's a favorite? Um, actually, I think Chromecast because it just hooks all of our services up in the TV and I can also uh, cast my phone if the TV, uh, if the sh whatever's on the TV is not working right. Yeah, I think that that's the one we use the most and probably my favorite just because of versatility. So you have an Android phone as well? I have an Android phone, yes. Uh, no shame there. I've got at least two. <laughs> Not judging. We're very non-judgmental over here at Delta CX. Um, so tell me about some of the, I don't need the whole recipes, but just name a couple quick and easy recipes that you tend to make. Um, anything I can throw in, in some sort of wrap or tortilla is my go-to easy meal. So tacos tends to be a lot. Uh, something I make a lot in our household, uh, just even leftovers, like just reheat them and put them on a tortilla and we're calling that a taco. Um, or something I can, some sort of mixture I can make and put it in a wrap, make it, maybe make a wrap or a burrito. And that's typically quick and easy because it doesn't require a lot of work. And we usually have something, uh, some leftovers or, or something in the fridge I can easily just reheat throw it in, call it good. Got it. Sounds delicious, actually. Um, can you give me an example of a difficult meal that you have attempted? Ooh. Uh, I don't know if this counts, but baking, I suck at baking. Uh, I can't seem to figure it out for some reason. Uh, and then anything that's going to require lots of time and lots of hours is just exhausting to me. I love the idea, I'll appreciate whoever made it, but it's just, it's a lot. Got it. Um, what tends to be your mood when cooking and can cooking change your mood? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. I think I definitely am more of a, whatever I'm feeling that day, I'll have to deal with it. Um, so if I'm in a good mood, it, it's I'll, I'll tend to lean in more into experimenting. But if I'm trying to get stuff done or I'm not in the mood, um, then I will often debate whether we should eat out or not. Just because I don't I don't want to be miserable in the kitchen. And then there are times that I'm very neutral. I tend to be very focused when I'm cooking. So there's that. <laughs> so what do you mean you're very focused when cooking? Is Do you lock all the doors? Um, <laughs> I, I hate distractions. Um, maybe hate is a strong word, but it's I don't enjoy having too many distractions because if I'm, I'm trying to cook something, I, I want to be focused on that, paying attention to everything. I'll often kick the dogs out um, because they're tiny and they can be annoying and get in my way and that'll easily turn my mood. It's like, get, get, get out of here. Um, but uh, it helps to have a, a sous chef is what I call him. So he helps out whenever I'm in here because he knows that um, I'm hyper focused and I'm trying to get through it, especially nowadays it's more survival. So I'm, I've been trying to find my way back into enjoying cooking. Oh, got it. So, so eating lately has felt more like just survival rather than enjoying. Yeah, I used to experiment way more 
before the pandemic and now it's like, all right, I need to actually, if I want to experiment, I need to plan it out. And especially with the grocery shopping, right? I can't be mm-hmm. as spontaneous as I used to. And yeah, I, I've kind of lost some of the love I had because we are cooking way more now. Not so much because I'm now doing protein shakes, but before I started that, which was a few weeks ago, two meals a day, cooking all the time, dishes piling up. Ugh, it got annoying. Dishes piling. Who does the dishes? The dishwasher. Aha! Thank you, dishwasher. <laughs> just checking. Um, mm. So, given what you just said, when you are cooking, do you like to listen to music or watch videos? No, not really. I rarely put on a pod- podcast if I'm if I'm feeling. Like, oh, I need to finish this, po- this podcast. I'll kind of transfer over from my computer to my phone. But those are more rare than often. Okay. And are you using a recipe for today's adventure? Mm-mm. Nope. Okay. And um, before we jump into watching you cook, can you tell me about what you did to prepare before today? Maybe something you chopped or set up? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I cracked the eggs that I'm going to use just because I didn't want to deal with, uh, that right now. Uh, and then I, I set up all of my ingredients, but that's fairly typical of me to do. Like I, I do the whole mise en place deal. Um, just again, I'm very focused and I want to make sure that I have everything. Um, I, uh, pre-washed some of my fruits I cut up the veggie sausage that I'm going to use and I had some tomatoes and onions pre, uh, I I, I chopped them off like a few days ago. So these are all good to go. You've been ready for days now. (laughs) Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Before I observe you cooking, any questions for me? No, um, kind of watching my phone here battery so if oh, i need to do switch need, yes do you need to plug it's, in uh, no i can only do one at a time is what i'm trying to say ah, okay <laughs> it's good it's fine go for it start cooking then hurry up <laughs> all right <laughs> no just so, do normal uh, never I'm say gonna, hurry up to someone <laughs> <clears throat> all right so i'm gonna start by turning off uh both of my uh a stove. I'm using two today. Sounds like you have a gas stove. Yes, I do. So I have one going in the back. You can't really see it. It's a little bit out of sight. But I'm using like a frying pan almost. And then I use, I'm use i using my flat pan over here for the eggs. So then I'm going to... Start whisking my eggs over here. I have four eggs in this bowl. Uh, Just two and two, two for me, two for the hubby. Gonna whisk them until I don't, they're they're well mixed, right? So I don't see any white or see-through chunks. Um, Then I'm gonna season it a little bit. This is like a a null, all, seasoning type of seasoning so it has salt and pepper and other like garlic and whatnot what is it that's adobo oh yeah so so, yeah so i'm gonna put a little bit in there not much kind of kind of like a like a pinch right um a little bit of black pepper again just kind of like a pinch a little bit of paprika and a little bit of cumin. And should probably not do the eggs first because those cook pretty quickly. Um, I'm gonna go fetch my spoon. Um, 
so in this back pan, it's nice and warm. So I'm gonna throw in some sofrito, which homemade from grandma, shipped all the way here um, with much love. It's a, it's a mixture of aromatics. So essentially you have like onions, some peppers and other um, type of herbs um, with oil. So it's kind of like a cooking based throw that in kind of like uh, maybe like a spoon is full I'm gonna let that sizzle for a little bit kind of get a, a little bit of that aroma um, that's how I know that I'm ready to, to toss in stuff once it starts smelling good you know um, and in there I'm gonna throw some of the tofu veggies uh sorry tofu sausage not veggies and some of the tomato tomatoes and onions hey it smells great yep. <laughs> yeah i can i can start smelling it so i think we're ready to go so i'll toss in my onions and tomato mix first because that probably takes the longest um, i don't want to overcook them i just want to get them a little bit um not raw i don't know <laughs> but not like overly cooked either okay and just throwing just kind of eyeballing it i don't have good measurements i probably throw in like four spoonfuls in there Away, and then I'm gonna toss in a little bit of maybe again eyeballing the sausage maybe like three four equal amount they're kind of equal amounts um, in there let's see how do I want to season this um, I'll probably throw in a little bit of the all seasoning type of seasoning again kind of like a a pinch um oh shoot um you know what i'll be right back i'm gonna i forgot to put my bread in the air fryer i'm gonna take off my headphones for real quick okay So I put in my bread in the air fryer, my new toaster, because we don't have a toaster. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've been using it a lot. I love the air fryer. It's my new my new favorite in the kitchen. Um, so I put the put them in there at 400 Fahrenheit for four minutes. Hopefully that gets me a nice toast without burning it too much. Kind of keep an eye on that. Um, and I like to put stuff away as, as I go, so I don't have like a whole mess in here. I have limited counter space, so yeah. My veggies still continue to cook. I'm just gonna mix them up a little bit so everything gets flavored. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of the uh, liquid aminos, which is a, an all-purpose seasoning. Uh, it's supposed to be a soy sauce alternative, and in this household, if something's off, we usually throw a little bit of this, and it fixes it for some reason, so that's us. <laughs> it's just that it's, it's kind of like that umami flavor almost. Alright, that's still cooking. We can probably get started on our eggs. Low heat. I'm gonna spray it down with some nonstick. 
It's nice and warm. One last mix before I pour. Gonna make sure that it reaches uh, all four corners. Okay, I could have mixed it more. I, I can see the unevenness bothering me a little bit, but it's fine. Uh, I'm going to taste the veggies mix. That was probably good. Leave it at low heat so that I don't burn them. Keeping an eye on these eggs. Um, and then uh, avocados are out of season, which sucks. Um, so whenever I'm feeling like today, I kind of felt like eating... Um, guac um i just buy pre-made but these that is more of an exception that it is a norm for me so normally you make it yourself yeah but uh yeah we get only get like tiny avocados here and they're really expensive for what they are and i rather not because sometimes they're even spoiled at that point and that makes me even more like more angry it's like oh come on i just spent how much on this And then I usually keep my, my two plates uh, close by. That way I can put like dirty utensils there too. Um, and we're eating off of these, so. Sounds like my toast is ready. I'll be back. Toast is nice, nice and ready. Um, it's a nice brown color. It didn't it didn't burn it like I just a little bit. That that's fine. It's fine. I'm still learning how to use it. I think I, I've mastered most of like how to reheat stuff in there, which is good. Okay. The first time, uh, I think the first week was probably the most experimental week with that appliance. Um, just because I didn't know how I was going to cook stuff. All right. Looks like our eggs are good. Oh, shit. I must have overcooked them just a tad. That's fine. So now I'm going to pour in my... No, let's do the cheese first. Okay, I'm going to put in some cheese. Sp sprinkle, like, just... However, however you feel that day, you sprinkle it on. Is that cotija? No, it's uh, my dairy-free cheese. Oh, okay. Mozzarella. Fake mozzarella. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, okay, so I use my cheese. I use this. At this point, this wouldn't even be here, but because I'm attached, I don't want to like take off my headphones. But right, I, like I, like I said, I just usually put stuff away um, while I wait for their other stuff to cook. Okay, so now um, cheese is melting a little bit, which is good. I don't want too much raw cheese, um, and then I, I'll kind of. Toss in my veggie and tofu sausage in here. And just kind of spread it around. I turned off my 
other pan. Okay. Just kind of evenly distribute it. Okay. Now, let's see. Let's see if I messed up. I'm just going to start rolling it a little bit. Un señor Edwin Martinez Velasquez está. <laughs> Uh, he is probably in his office with the dogs because the dogs tend to bark. Gracias. <laughs> okay, so doing this slowly because I don't want to burn myself. But And this is a new spatula. Never used this huge type of spatula before. So sp experimenting a little bit today. It's kind of floppy. It's not as sturdy as I thought it would be, but it's fine. It came with the pan, so I'm not I'm not complaining too much. I was more interested in the pan than in the spatula. So I would say that's pretty good. So I'm gonna turn off my stove just so that I don't cook overcook anything. Um kinda done with this so I can put that somewhere else. Same with this. And now I will spread my my avocado, my guac, and my toast. I'm trying to avoid using too many utensils too. So uh, <laughs> I am the type of person who, if I'm cooking just for myself and uh, my significant other, I I will kind of just reuse the same utensils, and that's it. It's just us. So spread um, just whatever amount I feel like that day. I like I like my toast, uh, my guac on my toast to not be on the thin side, right? Like I, if I want guac on my toast, I, there better be guac on my toast. Um, I'm done. I am gonna put some fruits in here. I kind of felt like eating fruit today. Ooh, that? Okay, yeah, those look good. So I'll probably split this in half just so that we can both kind of have equal amounts. I, um, that there's not a lot. Foods? Uh, no, so this is this came from a, a local uh, grocery store that I went yesterday to pick beers from. They had some uh, pre-washed, pre-cut uh, fruits, and I was like, yeah, okay, I don't want to deal with that. Um, so most, most of the fruits that I buy are frozen, but I kind of felt like eating fresh uh, fruits today, so that's kind of where I'm at with this. It's a special so, day. Yeah. It's a special, special day. I am also a snacker in the kitchen. So as I... As I cook, I tend to eat stuff as I go. Just so that I can make myself a little bit less hangry. So... There's that. There's that. Um... So, I also like to prettify my plates sometimes. Um, I try to arrange as I go as well. And the last thing that needs to happen is cut this in equal parts. Kind of eyeball it. Then put it on the plate. And that's about it. That's a, that's a meal. It is indeed. That is a meal. Oh, and um, I like a little bit of hot sauce with my stuff. So 
I pour a little bit of hot sauce on top. And that's what it. Sauce that's is a wrap. That? It's um so <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Hot Ones. It's a YouTube show. And I bought the season 14 hot sauces and I'm right now in what they call Tears of the Sun, which is one of the spicier ones. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of enjoy it, like the really mild, almost, do you call, do you even call this a hot sauce, hot sauces, and then kind of working my way up to the, the hotter ones. This one's a little bit on the, on the spicy one because it has a uh, ghost pepper in it. Ooh. All right. Well, I don't want to keep you and Edwin from lunch for too long. So a few quick last questions. After you cook, do you tend to photograph it and share it on social media? Not social media, but uh, I've made friends uh, during the pandemic and we're all a bunch of foodies, or at least majority of us are. And since we, we even have a dedicated discord because there's a lot of us. Um, it's just easier to keep track of stuff. And we have a dedicated food uh, channel. And <laughs> just to keep each other like motivated and ooing and aahing, I'll take a picture and share it with them. But that's as far as I'll go as sharing pictures with, with somebody or taking Got pictures it. of my meal. <laughs> um, quick question. You mentioned earlier that there weren't really too many food restrictions around the house, but it seemed like many things were dairy-free or meat-free or vegetarian. Is anybody mm -hmm. monitoring dairy or is anyone vegetarian? Again, I'm the one who introduces weird stuff into the household. <laughs> it's not that it's weird. It's just, is it an experiment or is someone like no. intolerant um, or... It's not like we, we can both eat anything, but I've noticed that, you know, dairy just sometimes breaks me out. Um, uh, and I've also been monitoring my food intake just because um, we're both predisposed to diabetes because of our family. So I try to be on the healthier side, even though I don't always adhere to those conditions, but I try. Got it. So you both have some diabetes in the family, and so you're worried mm -hmm. that could come down the road. Oh, yeah. I've already had a scared when I was a child, so mm. when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thank you for sharing. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have a dream kitchen smart home appliance, and what would it be? So are we talking existing, or are we talking, like, anything? No, it's dream anything. What would you what do you wish you could have? So uh, as a as a huge sci fi nerd, uh, I've always dreamt of having a food replicator from Star Trek. I, I just love the idea of asking a machine, uh, make me this recipe that I just entered in and food comes out and you can adjust you can tell it like, oh, make it spicier or add more salt next time. And you can adjust it that way. And it's, I don't know, to me, that's mind boggling. And I hope one day we can actually get there. But the, the and uh, if I wanted to cook, right, because I, I do there, I do like to cook. It's just, again, I'm kind of moody and I'm kind of in survival mode nowadays. But uh, I can just ask it to give me all the ingredients kind of like, a mise en place and I can go from there. Right? I don't have to even, even worry about prepping anything. So that flexibility to me is just mind boggling. It's a beautiful dream. Mm -hmm. Well, thinking maybe a little bit more currently, if you had a magic yep. wand and could improve anything about your cooking or meal preparation, what would you change? I definitely wish I had a bigger kitchen. Um, in our old apartment, right now I'm in a house, but in our old apartment, we had a huge kitchen and that gave me a lot of counter space. And right now it feels like a little, I need to be a little bit more strategic with, um, where, like if I have a bunch of ingredients, probably why I don't love to cook stuff that has like a bunch of ingredients either. Um, I need to take counter space into, uh, consideration and and what steps and in what order and even what appliances because my oven right now not great 
it's it's very temperamental it doesn't reach the temperature i want um so i was looking up new ovens new stoves um st stoves with ovens and they were just too expensive so that's not happening so i i opted out for an air fryer so that's kind of been a, a game changer but yeah i think bigger counter space for me besides that i think i'm kind of set with anything else because i do have a sous chef uh that helps me out with the stuff that i dislike which is essentially the setup um the the washing and the cutting and all that stuff he he usually can take care of that while i just focus on uh, making sure everything's kind of cooked uh up to par wonderful so it sounds like a great team um let me check if my assistant has any questions um someone wanted to know what air fryer you have uh it's called go wise usa it was one of the top rated ones from uh amazon i like it I don't, i'm not complaining it's again it's my new favorite toy Okay, got it. Um, is it something you can turn the phone and show us without showing us anything you don't want us to see? Uh, I'll send the picture because my kitchen's under, uh, like, I'm remodeling. <laughs> no <laughs> problem. Okay, we'll, we'll see it in the future. Um, <laughs> that might, um, we have another question. Does the sous chef help on every meal? Mm -mm, no, he tries but not every meal. Okay, sounds like something else to be coordinated. Yeah, well, if it's an easy meal, like I'm, I don't really need a sous chef. Like if I have most of the ingredients ready to go and it's a toss and heat up, like, yeah, I can, I can handle that. Kind of like today. Got it. Well, I don't want to keep you too long from eating your delicious eggs. I'm sorry they're going to be a little cool by the time you get to them. But uh, thank you for our time together. Yeah. Thanks for being a, a part of our study. Great to learn more about how you tend to cook meals at home. My assistant will email you in the next few days to get you your $100 Kitchen Thingies gift card. <laughs> Any last questions right. for me? No, thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much. Uh, wonderful. Eat it. Um, all right. Thanks to Maggie and, and maybe Sue Chef in the chat room. Um, anybody want to talk about anything we saw or did or that I wrote? Um, food replicator. Yep. Kayleen says her boyfriend's going to pour cayenne and hot sauce on everything. Well, some people just grow up with that. And Maggie takes half the time I did. Kayleen is not a contest. That's three people now who have made eggs. And, uh, you know, all the eggs were very different and took different amounts of time. So we've, I think we are, are at three eggs and two pastas so far. Um, and I, I think something I've noticed, and I don't want to ruin this for anyone who's going to cook soon, but I've noticed um, a lot of people chose dishes they thought would be quite simple, and they ended up being a little more complex and taking more time than they expected. Um uh, you know, the pasta, uh, I think it was Julia's pasta cooked a little bit longer than she might have thought. And um, Kayleen's stuff took a little bit longer. And, and that's not a bad thing. It's just it just speaks to people's expectations versus the, the reality. Um, uh, if you have any questions or comments, throw them out there now. And I'm going to just uh, look at my calendar and tell you some of the things that are coming up. And of course, let's see, I don't have my board of stuff up here today so i've got to do everything manually so please remember that you can subscribe to the youtube channel and empathize with the like button and let the algorithm know this is pretty good this will be in the micro lessons playlist shortly for uh future watching and more note taking and of course, you can also, uh, we've got paid memberships here now if you want to support the channel for uh, just as little as $3 a month, or you can also send super chats, super stickers, or the tip jar. And let's see, today is Sunday, March 21, so tomorrow is live cooking, hopefully with Joel Barr. I'm going to have to message him and make sure he can still make it. Uh, Tuesday is double office hours. So starting Tuesday, I'm going to do two office hours a day to accommodate different time zones. Uh, so I will be doing 10 in the morning, um, 
Italy time to help out with the Australians and the people east of me, India, Israel, you know, other places where we've got friends of the show, um, Africa. And then we'll still do the 6.30 p.m. office hours. So that's not going away or changing. I'm going to try doing two a day and see if I can help more people get more answers. Um, the later one, the 6.30 Italy time, will have Steve Portugal as a guest. So come bring your research questions for him. Let's see, Wednesday the 24th, we're doing a podcast with Sotiris, who's going to talk about setting up a user pool, which is part of research. Uh, Friday the 26th, live cooking with friend of the show, Naz. Saturday, nothing. Sunday, another special event, March 28th, fake UX research, uh, hopefully cooking with Randy Bapst from UX Stars. And then make sure you're here Monday, March 29th, as we are going to jump into Mural Together live. You don't need an account. I'll give you an anonymous link. And uh, we will start putting together our affinity diagram and see if we can organize things into themes and see uh, what we're hearing. I'll put up some of my notes over the weekend, so I might send the link early to the Slack friends if you want to start putting up your notes and then we'll try to wrap that up a little bit on Monday knowing again that this is the short version. I would normally be spending days and days on the affinity diagram or having an assistant work on it or a junior or something but you know this is something that that takes tens of hours not just one hour in a live broadcast. So any questions before we wrap up for the day and call it a show? Thanks again to the people who came. I think we have have 15 people, which is a super turnout. Thanks. Um, Sujish says, thanks for your effort. This really helps. Yeah, I hope so. I was just saying to the Slack channel, like, given the amount of time this whole project is going to take me, I'm really shocked that boot camps don't do it. I know you're thinking, but we know, Deb, boot camps are low quality, all capitalism. Okay, we know that, but we're looking at how much time this takes and how much it's going to help people, even if my style is imperfect, even if there's aspects of my style that are non-traditional, even if there's still more for you to, for you to learn that I'm not covering. Like I didn't cover screener surveys and some of the recruiting. I don't know why schools can't do something like this. You know, we, this wasn't that hard. Um, Shalene says, thanks. Constantina says, thanks. See you tomorrow. Krishna says, thanks. So thanks everybody for joining. And I guess I will play us out of here. Have a super Sunday, whatever time zone you're in. And I will catch everybody tomorrow, 630, uh, Italy time. Check your calendars. Um, and, uh, hopefully Joel Barr will make it. I will go message him now. Maggie says, thank you. This was fun. I hope so. We hope it was delicious. Bye everybody. See you tomorrow. Delta CX, available for CX and UX consulting, projects, and training. Contact us for a free consultation.